It's Monday, Monday, we're doing the Monday show. Ooh, no. All right, guys, it's Monday or Tuesday, if you're watching this on Tuesday. I'm not Adam, but this is the news from the last couple of days. And on this week's show, Donetsk Iranian independence rebellion vote, both a massive farce and a huge victory, depending on who you ask. Japan drones on over tensions with China and North Korea, and far-right Israeli settlers are terrorists, according to the Israeli justice and internal security ministers. Strong words. And speaking of strong words, we've got your comments too. But first, and to Ukraine, where millions of people have voted in self-rule referendums in the rest of Donetsk and Luhansk regions over the weekend. The vote was organised by the provisional administrations in the region. They are pro-independence and not entirely surprisingly, so was the vote, with 98% of Donetsk voting in favour of independence and 96% of Luhansk. The referendum asked people to vote yes or no to the question, do you support the act of state self-rule of the Donetsk or Luhansk People's Republic? With another vote on May 25th, then asking if they want to join Russia. Can't imagine how that one will go. So the people have voted. Or have they? A number of towns abstained from the referendum in protest at a vote that the government in Kiev has branded ludicrous, and there have been repeat allegations of vote rigging, multiple voting, and the like. Then there's the idea that many people were actually voting in protest at the so-called anti-terror operation being conducted by Kiev, which has been pitched by the independence administrations as a fight between neo-Nazi thugs from the capital backed by hostile governments and peaceful but quite heavily armed civilian protesters. Which is obviously quite different from the Western perception of Ukrainian citizen volunteers and special forces being sent in to launch pinpoint attacks against Russian agents disguised not especially well as heavily armed civilians. And that division and confusion has made for a pretty dodgy vote. In fact, even Vlad himself said that the referendum should have been postponed until the whole thing calmed down. Russia actually hasn't commented on the results so far though. Europe, however, has backed Kiev in saying that it was illegal and rigged. It's also been suggested that more sanctions are coming Russia's way as a result. Either way, what the vote has definitely not done is sorted out Ukraine's massive, massive, epically ridiculous problems. And speaking of huge wars about to erupt, Japan is to follow in the footsteps of its western neighbours by engaging in a spot of light droning. The country is to be lent two 40 metre wingspan Global Hawk surveillance drones by the US in order to keep tabs on both North Korea and Chinese activity around the disputed Senkaku or Daoyu Islands, a series of small, uninhabited spits thought to be sitting on a vast bed of oil and gas. Japan increased its military spending for the first time in over a decade last year, under increasing pressure from China's military build-up and North Korean missile tests. The two US drones will eventually be joined by three Japanese ones due to be delivered in 2015, giving the country the option to scan up to half a million square kilometres a day. They've got good reason to be worried though. China's in the middle of a massive drone race, unveiling eight new ones in November alone, although no one's actually sure if they fly. It's also expecting to start testing a carrier-based attack drone modelled on the US's X-47B within the next couple of months, and a whole carrier of those would be really, really bad news if the two ever came to blows. Which hopefully they won't, but they probably will. And now it's time for your comments, and in last week's Fact Hunt, which was about sleep, Camille B 1995 wrote, to add more to Fact 9, this type of sleep is referred to as unilateral sleep, which is when one hemisphere of the brain is being asleep whilst the other is awake. And another fun fact is that mallard ducks sleep with one eye open to record activity and to avoid predators. Very constructive. And then Derwent Hotel wrote, Adam Sitch is most definitely in my dreams, but oddly enough, so is Sam Datapaulin. Oh, you. And they're both wearing bikinis and dancing around poles. Sorry to hear you're having trouble sleeping. I sleep quite soundly. You dirty buck. And in last week's piece on what's going on in South Sudan, AdMonster11 wrote, Seriously, this reporting should move to Nat Geo slowly. I'm not sure if compliment or insult. But it got 11 upvotes, so either we love you all, or we hate you all bitterly. And finally to Israel, or Palestine depending on who you ask, more specifically to Israel's far-right West Bank settlers, who seem to be getting grief from all sides. 
There are calls for certain groups of hardliners, such as those in the settlement of Yitzhar, to be branded terrorists after a series of attacks on Palestinian and Christian property and threats against Israeli soldiers. The thing is, it's not just Palestinians who are calling for them to be outlawed, though obviously they are, it's the Justice and Internal Security Ministers of Israel itself who say these guys have gone too far. And you know that when senior Israeli security ministers are saying you're being a bit too militant, you really need to think about scaling it back. It all sounds pretty constructive, but the settlers' Palestinian neighbours aren't so convinced, one pointing out that whilst the government is criticising the settlers, it's also giving them free water and electricity and subsidising their operations. So what would it mean if certain extreme Zionist settlers were declared terrorists? Well, we don't know. With any luck, they would be moved further away from any Palestinian towns and therefore trouble, and the ringleaders would, you know, be put on trial for something. Is that likely in a country that's increasingly leaning towards extremists? Probably not. And on that cheerful note, it's time to say goodbye. Toodles!